Hi, this is Brian Gracely, and in this video, we're going to talk about uh, infrastructure for cloud computing. And while in many cases when we talk about cloud computing, we tend to be focused on the applications, we tend to talk about operations, it's also important from a technology perspective to understand that the infrastructure that resides underneath our applications and is part of how we do operations is changing as well. So it's not just, we tend to talk about, you know, it's network, it's uh, uh, servers, it's storage, it's some of the security types of things, but it's important to understand that just as the applications are evolving and the operations are evolving, the infrastructure is evolving as well. So we're going to walk through some of the things that are changing in the infrastructure and how they tie back into the other critical aspects of cloud computing. So as we look at what's really changing, it's important to sort of look at uh, the big trends. So the first thing that we're seeing is, you know, we've talked for a long time about, you know, sort of infrastructure as being server storage and networking as this pool of resources. Well, there's a couple of sort of next level down things that are worth looking at. So let's sort of break down the different elements and how they're changing. So from a network perspective, we'll just start with the network. The network is changing in a couple of different ways. The first is that we're seeing uh, with things like virtualization, with this idea of dynamic resources, which basically means, you know, I used to have servers that would have an application on them. I'd have, you know, lots of servers with an application on them. Um, we're now seeing, you know, consolidation of servers with virtualization. We're seeing multiple applications being put on top of servers. And what this ultimately means is that um, it introduces this ability for applications to move, right? So I'll have a, a cluster of servers that are hosting an application. I may have another cluster of, of, of server resources somewhere else. And applications can now move between them. This never used to happen in the past. And this, this happens for load balancing reasons. It happens for high availability reasons. It happens for maintenance reasons. And what makes this interesting is that it makes our server environments that much more robust, that much more efficient. But what it means from a network perspective is that I have to be able to keep the same IP address, the same DNS name, uh, all the same characteristics of the device when it used to be fixed and can now move to any resource anywhere else in the cluster. And in some cases, we're starting to see people want to be able to do this not only within a rack of equipment, but across multiple racks of equipment, across the data center, or in some cases, uh, between data centers. And, and the distance between those data centers could be short or long. And people are experimenting with that. They're trying out new technologies. So what that means for the network is, the network used to be very hierarchical. It used to have the sort of an access layer and a distribution layer and then a core layer and you had various layer two and layer three boundaries within here. Some of those things are starting to change. We're starting to see things begin to flatten out where we're seeing uh, access layer and core, where we're really seeing sort of everything being only one hop away. So we're seeing a flattening of the network because people want to be able to extend layer two domains from one, you know, from sort of one part of the network to another part of the network. So this will be layer two, this will be layer two, this will be layer two. So we're seeing a flattening of the network we're seeing more and more traffic that instead of going north and south from sort of client to server, we're seeing much more traffic flowing east to west, right? And that's because we're seeing more and more machine to machine traffic, we're seeing more and more applications talking to each other. And so this is creating more need to have greater amounts of bandwidth this way, more flexibility this way within the network. Um, so this is changing the infrastructure from a network perspective. Now, let's look at what else is happening. We're seeing people trying to be extremely efficient with their data center resources. We're seeing them say, I want to think about cost per, not gigabyte, not cost per server, cost per network port. We're thinking about cost per kilowatt, cost per transaction, right? So they're, they're trying to get much more granular. So the other thing that's doing to the network is it's beginning to take those silos that were storage and those silos that were LAN, and they're beginning to blur those lines together. We're seeing convergence of the network. And it's across file-based protocols, so things that are IP-based, iSCSI, NAS, uh, NFS, SIFS, and so forth. And we're also seeing it, in some cases, across block protocols. So we see things like FCOE starting to become one of those converging technologies to move things from separate storage networks and LAN data networks to more convergence around things like Ethernet so that I can take advantage of 
convergence of cabling, convergence of resources, and again, getting back to sort of convergence of skills. So those are the big things that are happening from a network perspective. Flattening, more bandwidth between uh, horizontally as opposed to vertically, and some convergence of um, LAN and SAN across multiple protocols. From a storage perspective, we're seeing people that want to be able to say, I used to have data here associated with an application, but I want it for high availability reasons, for um, uh, resource management, for dynamic uh, environment reasons. I want to be able to move that to other locations where I have storage, right? So we're seeing not only the applications be able to move, we talked about that, but we're seeing people want to move the data. They want to move the data dynamically as the application moves. Sometimes they want to move the data closer to where the application is, an instance of the application is. So we're seeing technologies that are helping us uh, move the storage. And some of those are clustering technologies, some of those are uh, for space reasons, some of those are for high availability reasons and distance reasons. So we're seeing people start to think about uh, disaster recovery differently. They're starting to think about backup differently. And as we've talked about many times, they're beginning to think about how do I interconnect private clouds and public clouds, right? And that involves not only moving applications, but in many cases, moving data. So we're seeing more and more from a storage infrastructure perspective, people that want to be able to access the data from wherever it is, but they also want to be able to, on the back end, move that more frequently and move it more seamlessly for disaster recovery, for high availability, for geographic uh, variability of where they want to have their data and how they, want to, how they want to move that around. So that's one of the things that's happening. The network is being expanded and being asked to twist and change storage and how it's, not so much how it's stored, but how it, it can be moved and how it can be dynamically allocated is, is happening more and more. We're seeing uh, deduplication and compression and thin provisioning and things that, that want to that want to help us maximize every bit and every gigabyte and every byte of storage that we possibly can because we're creating so much data. The third thing that we're seeing from a server perspective is we're seeing, and again this is just on the infrastructure, we're seeing more and more um, server-side technology that's allowing us to be very, very flexible. So virtualization obviously has, has sort of uh, I don't want to say completely commoditized the hardware, but it's, it's abstracted it so that I can think about the hardware less in terms of the individual pieces of hardware and more so about pools of CPU and pools of memory and pools of, of I.O. Now, what we're seeing more and more, though, is with uh, the server vendor technologies is we're seeing them realize that it's less about unique hardware capabilities and it's more about how do I integrate storage, network, and the servers in different ways. We're also seeing them beginning to realize that people want to consume those resources, network, storage, and servers, in ways that can be automated. So we're seeing more and more API availability. We're seeing more and more automation, ultimately, that, able, that enables us to be able to access this, whether it's a single API to get to all this, or whether it's you know, sort of multiple APIs but consistent APIs to be able to get to those resources. So we're seeing more flexibility needed in the infrastructure from a convergence perspective, from a uh, deployability and scalability perspective and a, and a high ability perspective. And then we're seeing more and more the vendors and the technologies are trying to drive automation across that infrastructure. So I'm not thinking about CLI on every single device and every device being different, but having consistency across that. So we're seeing more consistent operating systems across these things, we're seeing API access to them. And then the final thing that we're ultimately seeing is we're seeing more and more is holistically, we're seeing at a higher level up here in what we're calling cloud management, right? We're seeing the ability to say, I wanna think about all those resources that make up my infrastructure. I wanna be able to get to them through APIs. And I wanna have more consistent ways to not only get to the individual devices via APIs, but to start to think about them as a system. So when I come up here and I've got an application that I want to deploy, and I want to be able to say I need uh, this application deployed with uh, this amount of bandwidth and this type of availability and this type of security, thinking in terms of application terms, right? Not so much ports and speeds and feeds, which is more sort of converged infrastructure or just infrastructure terms. We're seeing uh, some things around cloud management where they're trying to think about things 
as more like connected systems. And how do I deploy things as connected systems? So that's happening, and, and it's just beginning to scratch the surface. We're seeing it across uh, some different cloud management uh, technologies and platforms, but they're thinking about how do I look at my infrastructure as more consistent pools of resources and systematic pools of resources. So all of these things are happening. Uh, the last big trend that we're seeing is not only is the physical uh, pieces of hardware and the physical infrastructure for convergence and for the infrastructure starting to change, so dynamically the architectures are changing and the needs of them are changing, but also we're seeing them move from only physical devices to more and more we're seeing instantiations of them as virtual devices as well. So we're not only seeing uh, servers, well not so much servers, but network and storage, but also security and all my layer four through seven services moving to virtual appliances, right? We're seeing them as sort of virtual server appliances. And what this does is this allows us to really match as applications become virtualized, as resources become virtualized in the server, to take all the underlying infrastructure and match those in terms of virtualization. So I can have a virtual firewall that aligns with a virtual server. I can have virtual networking that aligns with a virtual server. And all of the things around policy and being able to have them move and scale can align both in software as well as when I need super high performance in hardware as well. So we're seeing those trends. We're seeing the, the network infrastructure, the storage infrastructure having to be stretched because people want to take advantage of new opportunities. They're looking at how do I move from infrastructure in one cloud to another, which has its challenges, but people are starting to look at that. They're looking at how to programmatically look at infrastructure and manage it as a system. And we're also seeing the evolution of uh, the hardware capabilities that we had before moving to software capabilities, or at least in parallel moving to software capabilities, and having virtual server appliances for a lot of those infrastructure capabilities so that I can map what's happening with my applications and on the server down into my infrastructure. So hopefully this gives you a good start as to where uh, cloud infrastructure is moving. Um, it's, it's changing in new ways. It's forcing those organizations that have those skills to rethink what they do. Uh, they want to take advantage of greater high availability, greater uh, resource capability. They want to be very, very efficient in how they spend their dollars. And we're seeing the technology evolve both in terms of hardware, in terms of software, in terms of architecture, and in terms of where resources are placed at an infrastructure level to help support those applications that are enabling cloud computing. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks again for watching, and thank you.